What I would like to talk about today is a topic that is near and dear to the hearts of the many. And certainly I would not be the first person to address this topic. That is the topic of the lack of spirituality in our overly materialist society. Now, materialism for the purposes of this discussion can be defined along the lines of philosophical materialism, the belief that uh, you know, matter or that which is observable is the only thing present in the universe. This would include the instruments uh, scientists avail themselves of, as well as commercial economic materialism. But they obviously have a relationship to each other. And spiritual is a little bit more difficult, but that's really one of one I want to focus a bit more on. Now, I'm certainly not the first person to talk about the lack of quote-unquote spirituality in our current society. Many people in the alt-right have talked about it, albeit from an atheist angle, which is always interesting. But probably to my mind, the most potent exponent of the need to return to spirituality is the YouTuber and unfortunate lord of the unfortunate state of California, the distributist who takes a very Catholic, very Christian angle, but he nevertheless argues that uh, something needs to replace the empty vessel that society has become. And this is something I've been thinking about for many, many years. I think spirituality is very poorly defined, but when we really think about what it is people feel a need for in a general sense, it is the need to feel something greater than themselves, and indeed, oftentimes, to be part of something that is greater than themselves. And this type of spirituality can take on many different shapes and forms. You see it in many different types of religion. Universalist religions, such as Christianity or Islam, uh, much more closed religions, such as Judaism, and other types of religions that are not necessarily identifiable as either, such as Buddhism, or Hinduism, etc. These are traditional paths to quote-unquote spirituality. And when it was proclaimed, and I've said, I'm not the first person to mention this, obviously, and I've talked about this before, but when it was proclaimed by Nietzsche that God was dead, that is the notion, this notion of a omniscient, omnibenevolent overlord watching over us, Society, in a sense, fell into disarray. The world fell into disarray. And in many ways, the 20th century was a mad scramble to rediscover something akin to that. And it was an attempt at spirituality, albeit in the material world. Thus, communism, a kind of idealism of what society could be, and the desire to be part of that greater construct, was... a sp was at base a spiritual attempt. The same thing with National Socialism. Whereas the Christian might enshrine the figure of Jesus as the focus of his attention, his desire to be part of something greater than himself, the National Socialist looked to the German state and the, the German people. And, and so it goes for many, many different things. Religious spiritualists would claim that there's a sharp distinction between the types of ideologies that arose in the 20th century, such as um, National Socialism or Communism, but I don't really see that fine a line, um, and I'll explain in a bit why. I see all these things as attempts to grasp at something greater than the self, something greater than the economic and very real-world materialism we live in day by day. I think very few people that I know of would contest the ultimate utility of a philosophical materialism when approaching science. After all, if you cannot detect things, you cannot make use of their data, uh, you cannot propose hypotheses, etc., etc. I don't think many people would contest that. But nonetheless, there's something more afoot, something that science cannot do. And I would actually agree with people who say, well, science can't do X. Well, at least I would agree with them at this stage. As of yet, it cannot do X. It cannot give the individual or the group that sense of belonging to something greater than they are. What's at stake here, really? What's at stake is one worldview versus another. 
But I think one thing that many people uh, overlook is that you can't really have one or the other. They exist in a contiguous fashion to each other, and they feed off of each other in a way that is almost symbiotic, I think. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at previous spiritual attempts uh, in the history of civilization, it always takes on what I would call a physical manifestation, a form that is physical and observable. I would say, for example, the rituals of religion are more than just tradition and more than just symbols of meaning. They are an attempt to make something tangible that is otherwise uh, ineffable and otherwise untouchable. And so you, you bring it down to earth, and so you make the spiritual, in some sense, material. Because despite what everyone claims, human beings do have a need for material meaning. They have a need for uh, materialism uh, in the sense of the sensory, in the sense of what can be perceived and felt and touched and felt directly. And this is why every religion across the globe, in my, to my mind, has uh, an array of physical rituals that go beyond meaning, although it's because it's, it's a physical meaning that they're actually transcribing. Um, Catholicism, with the uh, eating of the wafer, uh, it's symbolism, yes, but it, it, it creates a, a conduit between the spiritual and the physical. So you can't just have the spiritual. Every religion has done this. And indeed, in the case of modern 20th century secular ideologies, or religions as I would call them, much if not everything was the physical manifestation of these things. Now there's a way of looking at this. You can almost call it uh, material religiosity. And there's even a, a type of interpretation that you can apply to the Bible, fundamentalist Christianity, for example, that will turn the religion that is otherwise somewhat ethereal and untouchable and ineffable into something very tangible and something that you can grasp onto grapple with and, and deal with in a material sense because the metaphysics become real. Many of you might recall my uh, late friend Adam Jensen. We had a discussion a few years back about this, but he was raised in a fundamentalist Christian household in the Midwest, and uh, he managed to shrug off some of those nightmares, but not without scars. I think ultimately it led to his death, and how do I mean that? He grew up with a materialist interpretation of the religion of Christianity that, frankly speaking, uh, made him shiver and terrified him. And when he finally had shrugged that off, uh, he, all he was left with was the philosophical materialism that I think is implicit in reality, and we'll get to that in a bit, and it's cold comfort. Ultimately, he killed himself probably because of the sense of hopelessness that uh, that type of... Uh, philosophy uh, implies uh, an empty, cold reality as uncaring that offers no prospects of the future, something greater to work towards, something greater to be part of. Now, of course, fundamentalist Christianity has its edges as well. The difference is, and here's the critical difference, the fundamentalist Christianity in this context offers egress. It offers a way out. If you're a good Christian, by however, by whichever means you want to define that, you can avoid the punishment of hell and ascend to heaven. There's no such ascension or salvation in the context of uh, philosophical materialism. Now, this is a huge dilemma because I don't see any evidence for any other conclusion other than philosophical materialism, which is to say everything of value that we've created that has transformed the world around us is based on that view. And every attempt to grab on to the, or grapple onto the, the spiritual, something beyond that inevitably turns into something material. This is this process I, I mentioned before, making the spiritual material. For example, when, when Christianity in its early days was much more of a spiritual thing, it was quite different in its composition. 
and after the Council of Nicaea and all these other things, eventually the Catholic Church becomes a body politic. And what happens? It becomes oppressive, for, for the most part, um, tyrannical, uh, and it, it becomes very much materialist. There, there are all kinds of funky practices going on, such as indulgences. And this was the practice whereby the cleric in question could absolve some sinner of his sins for a certain fee. So the institution of Christianity, its, its greatest manifestation, its greatest formation, the Catholic Church, very much became something material. Now, I have no doubt that there were spiritual elements here, and I have no doubt that it was not only a force for oppression and tyranny, but it, it was not exactly uh, the, the greatest thing at times. And so too with all these other ideologies. Islam, right? There are always these currents of mysticism, the Sufis. You know. um, there's uh, a guy like Eckhart, the, the uh, 13th century German uh, theological thinker, who, who, who writes in a very mystical manner. It's very detached from the materialist view of things. But even the, the, the concept of, of salvation, the concept of soteriology that I mentioned, in the medieval Christian mind was very much a material one. Uh, there were, hell had layers. A lot of this was influenced by Dante, obviously. But even before that, there was a, a vision of how things looked. And I just think that man cannot ultimately detach himself from the material. And yet he craves something greater. Some people would dispute this, by the way. I had a discussion recently with Coltane. And Coltane is an avowed hedonist, and he is quite content to live from one hedonic pleasure to the next. Roast pork one second, the next second, uh, excessive drink, then carnal pleasure, then video games, and that's enough for him. But it's the funny thing, I have to say, is in my case, despite my complete inability to believe in the spiritual, uh, in the sense of religion, or the metaphysics thereof, I too have that need to feel part of something greater. I cannot commit myself to any of that because I actually think that the risks and dangers that arise from what I regard as delusion are far too great. Now, what do I mean by that? Once again, what starts off as a, an attempt to attain spiritual fulfillment, to be part of something greater, always seems to end in disaster in one way, shape, or form, or another. Historically, as I said, the Catholic Church started off great in theory, this idea, of, this idea of universal salvation for everyone who wishes to commit themselves to God and his son, and it turns into a political juggernaut uh, offering people a ticket to heaven uh, if the price is paid, and among other things, torture, the Inquisition, all sorts of foul practices, the suppression of science. Look at the strivings of the 20th century, the various strains of communism throughout the world, national socialism, different forms of fascism. And I know I'm pissing people off here because some people love communism and some people love fascism and some people love national socialism, but whatever. The point is, is that all of these strivings to be part of something greater, ended in some form of disaster, sometimes more minor than other times, but still, nonetheless, something very destructive. And so I'm very wary of the delusion and the risk of being incorrect about certain things. Uh, and I, I also don't believe in, in uh, this stuff. I just can't commit myself. I think Hitchens put it once, and I'm paraphrasing that, I am made such that I cannot believe in these things. But nonetheless, I have that feeling of wanting to be part of something greater. Because, yes, it's not satisfying to be merely part of the material world. It's tolerable, and I'm very stoic for the most part. But I know why I have this feeling, because it, it's part of most human beings' psyche. I also know that I have it to begin with because I... In the past, at least, I could uh, gain glimpses of it from the strangest medium of all, video games, which is a material manifestation. 
I'll give you an example. I mean, for many people, this will be unintelligible because you don't play video games or you're not familiar with the series. But before Mass Effect really went to shit, and it started going to shit Mass Effect 3, and Andromeda, as we all know, was one of the biggest video game disasters ever, but certainly 1, 2, and parts 3. If you were Commander Shepard, and you were fighting for the lost, and you were fighting for the sake of an entire galaxy, your crewmates, they were all part of that. And there was a kind of universality of Shepard's cause. Aliens from many different planets from across the galaxy, your own crew, Garrus, Grunt, Niara, Tally, different, pe different people from different races, different species indeed, all fighting for this cause of survival, uniting the many different tribes uh, across a vast expanse of space, and, and fighting for that noble goal of mere survival, the, the right to exist even in the face of annihilation and assimilation by the Reapers. I mean, that was an exhilarating experience for me in my own head at least, it made me feel part of something greater. Of course, I'd have to turn the game off and I'd go back to reality and Shepard would be gone and Liara would be gone and Garrus would be gone. But it, it, it created that sense that people crave and I recognize it myself at the time and certainly in earlier times and in, in just in, in the course of my life that I too have that desire to be part of something greater. It's just, I don't think the, the universe is very much more than the material. And I think I'm just not capable of committing myself to things without the appropriate evidence. And I also think there's a concomitant risk when you commit yourself to something without evidence that it ends in disaster as evidenced by uh, the many rivers of blood in the history of humanity. But I can sense this. I think Coltane is more the exception here. I think as an avowed hedonist, he can, he can drive that pleasure. He can do these things, and it's sufficient for him. It's not sufficient for me, I have to admit. But nonetheless, I'm stuck with my own psyche and the reality I live in. So we're kind of caught at an impasse here, if you think about it. How do we go forward? Because even if we grant that, say, the distributist is correct about his uh, theories and assumptions, this Christianity will inevitably devolve into something that it used to be, or some sim similar thing. It will take on material aspects. It will be corrupted. It will lose its spiritual, ethereal core. And so it will go with every ideology a person dreams up. Many people in the alt-right, I saw a post recently in one of my videos, a comment saying he, guy used to be MGTOW, and then he discovered the great glory of preserving the white race and he's gone to the gym and he's going to trade school and working hard to create a family and all these things so he can be part of something greater. Hmm. I mean, I get it. Even though I couldn't commit myself to that type of goal, I get it. We have to acknowledge that the materialist reality, uh, both the philosophical materialist re reality I think is, is the only reality, but also the consumerist material, the e economic uh, market materialism is not satisfying people. It's why there's so much depression. It's not the only reason, but so much depression, anxiety, and general uh, discontent. And then we need to ask the question, on balance, what is better? And this is, I think, the really difficult thing. Because I think everything is a trade-off. Because I think when you strive for the spiritual, as I said, it eventually becomes, at least partly, or in some cases, the majority of the material. It's physical rituals, the desire to impose spiritual truths into reality vis-a-vis -vis ecclesiastical authority or the authority of Islam or all sorts of things. So we have to think, what is better on balance? My concern moving forward is that all these strivings for the spiritual will end in rivers of blood they will be ultimately destructive. And as bad as it sounds, as empty and vapid and unfulfilling as this incredibly bland reality is for many of us, if not most of us, it's still better than the alternative of turning to unprovable things that some people would regard as delusional uh, because the risk of destruction is too great. If such a thing consumed my friend, because I'm rather convinced that 
Adam Jensen, had he not been brought up along fundamentalist Christian lines, he would have grown accustomed to the ennui and emptiness of reality in a way that some of us do. It's just that dichotomy, that swing of materialist Christianity, material, the materialist metaphysics of Christianity, to here there is, I'm liberated, but there's nothing to look forward to, was too much for his mind, too much for his psychology. I think on balance, probably we're still better off now, unless we want to engage in constant strife and have constant problems. But I'm not 100% sure about that. But I just think that as these many factions, be they religious factions or the alt-right, or people pushing a, a certain vision of society that's purely political, as they move forward and, and try to achieve the spiritual, that desire, try to make real, render real that desire to be part of something greater than themselves, they will always run the risk of their own need to manifest something as the material, and that can end up being a bloody disaster as has been demonstrated many, many times in history. So I think this is an important discussion to have. I might have more such discussions in the future about this subject matter, but these are some somewhat thought out yet cursory observations I've made about the nature of the topic. And it's something that I think we all need to think about because it is important. Most of us are, are walking through life as zombies. There's no doubt about that. The question is, attempting to nullify that state of zombiehood might be worse than the state of zombiehood ultimately. And that, that is my concern in the short run, that is the next few decades, and in the long run uh, regarding humanity at large. Everyone, thanks for watching. And uh, if I'm still alive in the future, I will check you out later. Bye-bye, and may the gods watch over you. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.